Andy, uh, the problem of consciousness seems to be so severe that some of your close and very intelligent friends have moved in uh, not just the direction of panpsychism, but in becoming quite uh, missionary in their belief that this is the only way ultimately to solve the hard problem, as uh, Dave Chalmers uh, has uh, coined, of consciousness, why, why we have this inner feeling, these qualia, that we need to have some new feature of the world, and panpsychism seems to be a candidate. Um, do you think they're going in the right direction? <laughs> I think panpsychism is uh, a, a kind of council of despair, if you like, because to me at least, it looks so unexplanatory. It's as if we're really puzzled by consciousness and how it can realize itself in the physical universe. And then we think, well, perhaps the answer to this question is that it was there all along and that um, mm -hmm. everything in the universe has a bit of consciousness. To me, that's as if we were puzzled about how digestion works and we thought maybe everything digests a bit <laughs> and we're just well-organized digestion. <laughs> it could be true, but I think we're so far away from being currently pushed to that position in the sciences of the mind that I see it as a kind of last resort. It's only when we've, I think, pursued every possible avenue for what strikes me at least as a much more plausible position that consciousness emerges when matter is organized in a certain kind of way and that it's understanding the organization that matters. I think it's only when that has been really shown to be a research program that can't deliver on consciousness that uh, we should start to consider these other options. The analogy between biological activities like digestion or um, what the kidney does in excreting urine as a biological process similar to consciousness, uh, doesn't that uh, completely gloss over this fundamental difference of the, what the output of uh, the brain is or what the output of what we call consciousness as opposed to the output of digest, of splitting apart proteins into their amino acids in the stomach or the excretion of, of urine into, into, the, uh, into the bladder. Uh, I mean, isn't consciousness such a radically different in kind that the analogy doesn't hold up? I guess I don't think so. I think that, that only seems to be true if, if you start, if you like, from your experience of the world. Um, and it is true that a lot that, 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 that I think would be the sort of gold standard starting point for, um, for a panpsychist. Uh, but there's no reason to start there. I mean, we encounter consciousness in the world by encountering um, stuff that has all kinds of distinctive properties, stuff that responds in sensible seeming ways to um, information impinging on its sensory peripheries, stuff that takes steps to preserve its integrity. Maybe that's more like life than consciousness, but you mm -hmm. might expect these things mm -hmm. to be sort of matter getting itself organized in more and more complex ways. So I actually don't think that it's a, a misleading example. I, I think on the, on the contrary, the, the kind of the intuition that there's a huge difference here is rather like having the intuition that somehow um, if you, even if you re, sort of recreated all of the amino acid splitting and everything for digestion, you might have somehow missed the real essence of digestion, which was something else. <laughs> um, why do you think um, what was looked upon generally as a historical pre-scientific idea the, of vitalism, where everything was sort of alive, mountains were alive and gods and whatever, that this has sort of crept back into very sophisticated people, uh, the idea of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, um, fundamental nature of reality is, uh, is somehow proto-conscious. Well, why? I think actually it's, it's, a, it's a sort of a philosophical illusion of some kind. So I think that the reason that this has happened is because of very influential philosophical arguments, um, you know, the kind that, uh, I'm, I must say, Dave Chalmers has not been um, non-influential yeah. in, uh, in, in, in putting out there. Um, and I think these have given us a picture of what qualitative experience is, where it actually becomes impossible for any scientific theory to actually deliver on it, because it becomes defined as this sort of um, extra sort of feeling about how things are, which is not exhausted by all the things that we might say and do and all of our response profiles. So basically, I think the science, or at least bits of the science, have started to go that way 
because of what's fundamentally a philosophical misunderstanding, one that if you want the other side of the coin here, you have to read Dan Dennett. So yeah. basically, I think it's a failure to take Dan seriously. The problem that you're saying is that people define consciousness at the beginning in such a way as to obviate a, a scientific or a naturalistic or materialistic uh, approach to it. Yeah. And if you assume that, then, that's the, then your conclusion would follow. But the fact is, is that the experience that we have is so radically different from anything else we find in the, in, in the world. Isn't that not the case? Isn't the, the, uh, the uh, substance of consciousness, what we feel, what we sense, isn't that so radically different than anything else that exists? Um, it is different. Um, I'm not quite sure where we draw the lines for a really radical difference here, but um, I, it seems to me that a consciousness like mine, if the sorts of stories that I favor turn out to be right, will arise at the point where uh, intelligent systems are crunching together interceptive information about how their own bodies are mm -hmm. with extraceptive information about how things are in the external world along with um, having themselves as part of their own predictive model about how things will unfold in the world mm -hmm. so that I'm if you like part of a representation of me anyways a kind of part of my own prediction machinery Mm -hmm. so that, as it were, I anticipate how I will respond um, emotionally when I step into a, a different kind of situation. I uh, anticipate my own interceptive responses to different kinds of situation, bring them under labels like, you know, I'll be excited, I'll be anguished, and so on. And I think we can tell perfectly good stories about this using the apparatus of interception and prediction and the kind of stuff which isn't, um, it's not, it's not building qualitative experience out of qualitative experience, mm -hmm. which I think is what the panpsychists want to do. Mm. Surely it's deeply unexplanatory to, to say, <laughs> here's how I explain qualitative experience. Um, it was just there all along. To use the mechanisms that you've worked with, which have been important contributions and help us understand the richness of consciousness, uh, uh, embodied cognition, extended mind, uh, predictive uh, mechanisms with the brain are all important to understand. But those are, and to use your word, those create responses. Mm -hmm. Those create uh, actions, behaviors, external behaviors. Mm -hmm. They have nothing whatsoever to say, it seems to me, to the experience of, of, of feeling it, what it feels. It, will, it could totally determine the response pattern. Well, that response pattern includes everything that I say and everything that I do. Yes. So that means it includes all of my expressions of genuine puzzlement about the origins of consciousness in the material universe. Um, it also, if you like, so, so a, a scientific story of the kind that I imagine we'll have within the next maybe 20 years, certainly within the next 50 years, will explain all of those responses. It will explain why um, creatures like us are especially puzzled about consciousness. And at that point, surely we've done all the work that you could expect science to do. The idea that somehow you've not yet explained the little light inside, when you've explained why the creatures say there's a little light inside, you've explained why they say, and this little light is a really puzzling bit about conscious <laughs> experience, you've explained all of that. Um, at that point, I... I think this is, it was just a sort of chimera. Why would we keep chasing an explanation of a light when we've explained everything that we say and do that has to do with the light? Uh, uh, you said everything that has to do with it, but yeah. you still haven't explained that difference of light. You can explain all the responses that, that occur. That is a difference. And Maybe. you think those are equivalent? Yeah. So the difference between having the light and not having the light is the difference between maybe having a little bit of interception mixed in with your predictive mechanisms at one level, having interception plus yourself turning up in your own predictive model at another level, maybe all of that plus having language with which you can start mm -hmm. to um, talk about your own thoughts, talk about your own, own puzzlements at yet another level. Uh, I think that once you've told the scientific story for all of those levels, um, you've explained all there is to explain about the light. The idea that there's something left is a kind of vitalism. It's a sort of, you know, the extra thing, the thing that makes life life, for example. Um, why think there is such a thing?